Surgeon General's warning. The Surgeon General has determined that banging your head against a television set repeatedly while smoking can cause lung cancer, emphysema, and severely impair your ability to view TV altogether. Sunday night assumes no responsibility for lack of enjoyment by any parties engaging in this asinine behavior. You know, I am sick and tired of Todd rejecting every sketch we write for the show. Every week, it's the same thing. It's getting, it's getting to be ridiculous. And he comes in, he does the same thing every week. He comes in, he takes one look at it, he makes a snide remark, and then he leaves. But this one, this, this is, is the week. This we is our diamond in the rough. For two weeks, it's going to be great. Right. Yeah, the Heidi Fleiss line, it's killer. And the, the way we tie it in with the whole Bob Packwood thing, Unbelievable. Yeah. It's going to get big, big laughs. Yeah, and to be quite honest with you, I don't know if my mental state will hold up to any more of his badger. If he comes in here and just blows us off in this one, I'm going to lose it. I'll tell you what, I will not be held responsible for my actions if he be held to the sketch. That would be the end. Yeah. Hey guys, you working on something here? Oh uh, yeah. Another disaster in the making where the F word means fun, it's Sunday night. With our house band, Four Hogs and a Lady, and our guests, well, they're still being scheduled. to another edition of Sunday Night, and uh, glad to have uh, each and every one of you uh, here in the, uh, in the studio audience, and uh, by viewership at home as well, and you know those Nielsen ratings just keep going up and up, I understand, but uh, you know, I, I was reading the, uh, the, the uh, paper this morning, and you know, President Clinton wants to introduce a new crime bill to get more police on the streets, uh, but without raising taxes again, he's had a problem with that. So to get more police on the streets now, uh, President Clinton has proposed shutting down all Dunkin' Donuts shops across the country. So I think <laughs> right there, I think right there, you can really look at it. So, there you go. Wait, wow, it's amazing. It's amazing what that studio audience will do here for us. You know, it's great to have each and every one of you here. Uh, you know. <laughs> You know, I, I was reading this in the paper as well this morning. You know, Miami is just a, a wild and wacky place anyway. But uh, apparently now, apparently down in Miami, uh, authorities are trying to deter prostitution with cable TV. That's right. Uh, anyone cited, uh, or rather convicted, <laughs> Cited, convicted of prostitution will have their picture shown on TV. Uh, now in Washington, they've had a similar program for years there. It's called the Packwood Channel, hosted by uh, Mayor Marion Barry. So, I, so uh, that's right. Uh, you know, I guess the spanking channel is coming next. But I'm not even sure what that means. Anyway, uh, also, uh, uh, oh, this is this is rather sad. Uh, of course, uh, tragedy striking California fires and everything. Another tragedy. Maybe you didn't even see it. I'm not even sure. Maybe you didn't see it this week. Albert M. Marcus died yesterday at age 82. He was the founder, of course, of the chain of new Marcus movie theaters all across the country. 
Funeral services will be held tomorrow, as I understand it, tomorrow at 5.15, 7.30, 9.45, at a matinee at 12.10. So I think, I think, uh, thank you, thank you. Uh -huh. great, great to have you all here. Uh, well, we were, we were very excited about tonight's show. Uh, were very excited about tonight's show because we had booked actor River Phoenix. That's right, he had been here. But uh, unfortunately, circumstances have, have rendered that uh, that is impossible now. So, uh, so tonight, we'll feature uh, some comedy, a couple of surprises, and of course, ladies and gentlemen, say hello to our wonderful band, Three Men, A Lady, and a Boar, or something like that. Right over there, Tom and the boys, and the girl, over there, the woman, over there. Give them a big hand, yeah. Yay. Tom, Tom, how are you doing over there tonight? Well, I'm a little sore, actually. I had a rough weekend. Sore? What's the matter? Well, well, I don't know. I got beat up this weekend. You got, you got beat up? And what, yeah, I was, uh, I was out skydiving out, a, out in Nevada, and it was my first time out there. And I don't know, I was up in the air, and I'm com coming down, and I don't know, I found this clearing. I didn't know where to land. I saw these bright, bright lights, and well, it turned out to be the Holyfield fight. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's that's uh, kind of a problem there. But uh, well, you know, you you look not too worse for the wear. I'm glad you made it out. Now, how about how about Mrs. Uh, Bo? Riddick Bo is a wife there. Is she okay too? Well, she was surprised to see me. <laughs> <laughs> I bet she was. Uh, well, you do a nice job, and uh, we'll see you later on in the show. I have a little tune for us, as I understand. Troy Emerson, how are you doing tonight, my friend? <clears throat> oh, I'm a little sore too, but I certainly didn't go parachuting. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> so you have a good weekend. Yeah, I had a weekend. I don't know if it was good, but I had a weekend. <laughs> Anything exciting happen? To me? Well, yeah, I guess. I stayed in Platteville, I guess. You could probably answer that. <laughs> well, you know, before we go any farther, uh, Registrar Ed Deneen, our fine, fine Registrar here at the campus, um, wanted me nice to mention... Nice guy. He is a great, a great guy. Mm -hmm. and he wanted me to mention, of course, tomorrow, uh, spring registration starts on campus, and uh, get an early start. Now, he's been in a couple of our skits here uh, Sunday night this, this year, and I told him I'd, I'd do a serious little plug for him. He says, get there early, be patient, and he'll be glad to help you. <laughs> and there's free, uh, free cigars after you get done registered. So I think, but uh, no. Uh, I feel sorry for those, to be politically correct, they're not freshmen. First year students who have to wait in that <laughs> stupid line. Politically correct freshmen, yeah. Yeah. It's like you're not, uh, you're not blind as a bat, you're just visually challenged, yeah. right? <laughs> hey. <laughs> you know, anyway. No, I'm Well, uh, you know what? The big, the big story, of course, uh, all weekend long was the Badgers, the Wisconsin Badger football game down at Madison. Yes. And uh, unfortunately, they, they tied, you know. Well, what at least nobody do? got killed. That's right. That's, that's a right. plus. Yeah, that's right. They, they've had some problems down there, of course. Uh, last week, of course, at Michigan game, uh, a bunch of students rushed the field afterwards, like 50 to 70 people hurt, depending on which story you believe, which report you hear. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, as a result of that, there were some videotapes taken by the university and many of the news organizations around the country wanted to get their hands on it. But they can't. That's right, they can't. The, the university is not allowing them to look at the, the videotapes taken of that huge melee at Camp Randall last weekend. The State Journal, I think, suing them mm -hmm. for, for, for possession. As is the Milwaukee Journal. Oh, really? I didn't yeah. know that, for possession of the tapes. But you know, it's funny. Don't tell me. Yeah, it's funny. The Sunday night, <laughs> our crack research, our research staff here at Sunday night has Manny's to get our hands on the secret tapes of Camp Randall, of the melee that happened last week at Camp Randall. Does Catherine know this? What, Catherine Weil? Yes. Uh, I don't think so. We, this is a Sunday night exclusive. You won't see it anywhere else. So Russ, our fine director, can you roll those tapes, please? Last week at the Michigan Camp Randall game. Here we go, folks. Look at that. Here's, first of all, here's the crowd beforehand, the calm, <laughs> calm crowd. They're, they're just sitting there Wearing watching. Wearing their Badger uniforms. That's right. They're, they're just sitting there. I don't know. They're studying. Singing the alma mater. They're studying statistics or something. They're, they're getting ready. Oh, look. Here's, here's the security now. Here's the security of, uh, of uh, Camp Randall. And, oh, there. There. Look at There you go. Look at the gate going. There you go. Oh, I never knew that. <laughs> Apparently, we had got. Look at that. Oh, State Street. State Street is going up in flames. Look, oh, look at that. People are running for their lives. No wonder. No wonder they don't. That guy ain't going to make it. Well, they're not going to make Maybe it. Maybe they'll get to the Capitol and see Governor Thompson. <laughs> well, there he is. <laughs> well, well, oh, I never knew. The radio, the broadcast, the lighting booth was also on fire at Camp Randall last week. Look at that. I never, I never knew that. Well, no wonder they don't bad. want it released. Oh, there, oh, 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 there it goes, right down on, uh, on David Ward's press box. People running for their lives through State Street. They were downtown Madison. Oh, and look at that. Look what Camp Randall looked like after that incident last week. Watch for the Baumgartner girl. <laughs> it's flattened. 
Look at that. I don't see her. And, oh, there she is. Oh, there. <laughs> Look at that. In, in the rubble. Boy, that's sad. That is. That's, that's just... It's curious. It's I wonder if that could happen at the Ralph E. Davis Pioneer Stadium. Well, I, I don't know. Look at that. People just... They, they're ill. They're, they're lying there. All right. Well, Russ, I, I think we've seen enough. I think we've seen enough, Russ. Anyway, that's the... Uh, well, thank you. Thank you. Camp Randall. Exclusive footage. You won't see it anywhere else. Of course, uh, you know, they had some contingency plans in place this week uh, for the Ohio game. So mm -hmm. that did not happen this week. Right. Now, I understand our fine um, athletic director uh, on campus, uh, Daryl Ann Leonard, has also put into, into place some security measures for this weekend's game at Ralphie Davis Pioneer Stadium against Stevens Point which will be played this Saturday. The pointers. Apparently, uh, point, uh, pointers, that's right. Apparently now, uh, all the guards, all campus police, will have a strict uh, diet of uh, basil, tofu, and no-dos. So I think, I, I don't know, I think that should, <laughs> should keep them awake. But hey, get out there and see that uh, Pioneer game. Should be, should be a lot of fun, I think, don't you? Yeah. I, what? Oh, my God! What, the, what is, uh, what are you doing? What's, is this Caesar's Palace? No, this is not Caesar's Palace. That's no. That's that, pal. It's not Caesar. Get him out. Pretty cool. This is Pretty not Caesar. Judas Priest. <laughs> You've been watching our family or Tom too long. We got parachuters here. <laughs> I don't That's know. That's great. <laughs> it's, it's nutty. It's wacky and it's nutty. Anyway. Uh, only well, in Platteville. And only in Platteville. Last week, now, two weeks ago, we had, uh, we brought you a public service event from Sunday night mm -hmm. called uh, Crime Watchers. Platteville mm -hmm. Crime Watchers. This week, we have a community calendar announcement here uh, as a public service on Sunday night, and we're happy to bring that to you at this time. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, here now at Sunday night, and we are always trying to find new and better ways to serve our viewers. So here, as a public service, is Cannabis Community Calendar. Enjoy. <laughs> Rick, Richard Riley. Today, uh, Rich is uh, from uh, from the Chamber of Commerce. <laughs> from the, it's gonna talk. Shoot. Uh, yes. Well, uh, this week the Chamber of Commerce are holding our annual uh, bake sale. Uh, this week, uh, the proceeds will go to the Downtown Revitalization Project, and uh, we'll have all kinds of delicious uh, baked goods. Did you, uh, did you say baked? Ba ba baked goods, yes. We'll have uh, cookies and pies and all kinds of cakes and brownies. Um, <laughs> I, I could bring some brownies. That, that would be very nice. <laughs> Is there anything else? Uh, yes, actually. Uh, this year's bake sale will coincide with the annual Jail and Bail fundraiser uh, at the police police station. You mean with cops? Uh, yes. Well, I can't bring any brownies, huh? Do you, you like Deep Purple? Uh, no, actually, I don't regularly listen to rock and roll. I find it distasteful and uh, generally an affront to the senses. Well, all labels, or all names are just labels, man. What? How about Zeppelin? This has been Cannabis Community Calendar. And there we have Cannabis Community Calendar. Stand by, Tom and the boys. Here we go. Back in a minute with more Sunday night. Stay tuned. <laughs> See, this job is now a piece of cake, Larry. But then... Yeah, I'll tell you something, partner. I just might stick around a few more years. But then... No more dashboard du jour or vents under glass, huh? But then... Look out! Even with air 
there, Bags Vince. You still got to remember to buckle your safety belt. Now you tell me. You could learn a lot from a dummy. Buckle your safety belt. You're going to be better than me, Christopher. I can see it in your eyes. No wasting your life on something you hate. Not for my son. You're going to college. I can see it in your eyes. I can see it in your eyes. You are going to do something important. Christopher, time for work. We've always had the dreams. Now we have the means. Please, support the United Negro College Fund. Thank you for uh, staying along with us tonight. And of course, uh, uh, we're trying to find a guest right now. For if you're wondering why, we're, we're looking for some people. River Phoenix is supposed to be on the show tonight, and uh, he's I'll late. Be... He's really late. <laughs> The late River Phoenix. I think he's going to get yet later. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think so. Anyway, so, so uh, we're happy to be joined now by our head writer, Chris Pauls, and uh, Troy Everson uh, continues to be with us here. It's just great to be here, Tom. And uh, a little bit of uh, small town news. Now, we're all from small towns, and uh, what do you got for us this week, Chris? Well, I don't really have any news. I just, uh, you know, a few observations. Troy probably helped me out with this. You're for from sure. small town, you know. I just think small towns are a uh, national treasure, and... Mm -hmm. I just don't think enough. Uh, and a great place to raise kids. Exactly. You know, and as long as we got all this time to kill, why don't we just talk about them for a while? Sure. I, I think that's great. I mean, you know, you know, anything you want. Yeah. Well, you put in so much time for the show, I'd love to have you. Just spill <laughs> your guts. You know? He's really trying to get something out of us here, <laughs> yeah. isn't he? I don't know if it's going to happen. But anyway, what else do you uh, want? Say one thing for organization. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. This is going really well. <laughs> anyway. Think, anyway, uh, you know, small towns. I think. In Wisconsin, actually, all you need to do is get together with about, oh, 20 or 30 of your closest friends. And start a church. No, build four bars first. Build a four park. bars, one church. And a park. No parks. You open up a gas station, but then you close it down right away and sell antiques out of it. And then that's a town. Right there. <laughs> I think, you know, I think you may have something there. Well, I don't know how much time we got left. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, but if I, you do live in a small town, you always have to have those wonderful neighbors. Uh -huh. that keep up their house so wonderfully. <laughs> you know what I'm always impressed by? What? Is those two-liter soda bottles that have slits along, <laughs> along the side, and they sit and spin on the porch. God, those are wonderful. Aren't they great? Or how about the, how about the carport with the, uh, with the uh, plexiglass... Not plexiglass. What the heck do you call that stuff? That green stuff? That's that, fiberglass. That's rippled? It's fiberglass. <laughs> oh, okay. The one that kills me is, is lawn ornaments. AstroTurf on the deck. <laughs> And, and the deer, the fake deer. You know, sometimes in larger towns, you go into larger towns, and there'll be like a fake deer in these people's lawns. Now, I can understand that <laughs> you, the illusion might carry itself if you're out in the country. You might think, oh, there's a, there's a doe in my lawn, and you know what else? moved for three years. You, you know, know what else might help? In Milwaukee, I think they have, uh, they have fake gang members in the lawn. <laughs> That's why he's the host. I think, I don't know. But, but, uh, but with the deer, you know, what, you know what would help? For those of you who, who've never seen a real deer, those things are not the real size. All no, right? they're not. Miniature they're deer. Miniature deer. Yeah, that's right. Anyway. You know, I, I brought the uh, the old farmer's almanac here, 1994 al almanac. And, well, I guess uh, it's not old. Well, it's a new one. Okay. And I uh, just thought I'd let you know that uh, coming up this week, what is the date? The 9th or the 11th? What's the, what's the day? The 6th? Well, it's Sunday, I think. It's, it's the 7th. All right, coming up this week, we'll have a sunny and mild uh, a week this week, according to the farmer's almanac. But uh, the 12th, between the 12th and the 14th, a big snowstorm coming. I'm sure that'll be right on the money. So, so for what I see, somebody out there in the hall uh, coming. I can't see the lights are kind of bright. Who is that coming? It's, oh, it's, oh, it's Jeff Perry. Jeff, come. what's hey. the what's the matter? Oh, Jerry Perry. More help. I'm sorry, I left my stuff. Well, I was kind of wondering what all that stuff was out in the front here. I mean, an old tire or an old uh, hubcap. What, what was the deal? Kind of about? unsightly. Well, I moved it out of my apartment and uh -huh. I had some stuff stored here, but I I left it here. Do you mind if I just take it? No, go ahead. I don't want to interrupt your little show, man. <laughs> because your your conversation well. was absolutely fascinating. But if you don't mind, <laughs> yeah, I might just step in here Great. and take this away. Is that all right? Sure, go ahead. Go right ahead. That's that's fine. Just. Uh, Lift careful, don't hurt your back. Yeah, don't hurt Lift your back. Lift with your legs, not with your back. Uh, You're right. Well, well so. thanks, thanks for taking well, care I'll of that stuff. I'll take this and uh, I'll be, be on my way. Be All careful. right, well, All right. take care well, of yourself, Jeff. See you later. We'll see you later. Decorate the apartment. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, my God. Is he okay? Wait. Oh, I don't know. Push your beeper. Oh Push God. your beeper. Oh, wait. oh, look at that. Ah, that's not cute. 
very, very nice job. I think the 7-4 so, was a Russian judge. <laughs> Boy, that Tom, he's a hard grader. The music department will be uh, billions for the bass <laughs> any time now. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that, oh, boys. Now we're really tired. Oh, well. Now we are, we're fried on that. We've broken the bass now, ladies and gentlemen. It broke my heart. Look at that. Well, John Cranky's <laughs> still got his nice teeth. <laughs> That's <laughs> nice. John Cranky. Yeah, is. Russ, let's just keep showing that. <laughs> <laughs> we've, broken, we've broken the bass. Try to move on. Well, uh, thank you, uh, Chris, for joining us uh, with, with some hometown oh, yeah, news. It was always, great. always, always a pleasure to have you here. And uh, we're going to take a short break now. And uh, when we come back, uh, hopefully we'll have found a guest by then. Stay tuned. Uh, river, river, <laughs> river. We need see him. A, see a poster behind us back here? I don't know. See that? It's a beautiful, my own private Idaho. That was a great movie. It was. I liked it I a lot. Phoenix. I, I really enjoyed that. Look at it. There he is. Running on empty, too. River Phoenix and uh, who's the other guy? Reeves? Canoe Reeves. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Bill and Ted guy. <laughs> anyway, we're back. Stay tuned. More Sunday night to come. Back in a moment. Thanks for joining us on a Sunday Okay, attention asthma and allergy sufferers. The following demonstration will show you how to avoid sneezing, wheezing, watery eyes, and other discomforts associated with your condition. Okay, Joe, ready when you are. First, shut out all industrial pollutants. Don't expose yourself to cigarette smoke. Avoid exhaust fumes. How you doing, Joe? Good, good. Don't breathe in any dirt. Don't breathe in any dust particles. Uh, let's see, let's see. Um, pollen. What? Pollen! Oh, right. Avoid pollen. Thanks, Joe. Tree pollen and grass pollen. Don't be around ragweed. Uh, get rid of all animal hair. Oh, gee, I'm sorry, Joe. Anyway, stay away from moles. Don't breathe the air on hot days. Uh, boy, this must be difficult, huh, Joe? You know, there is another way. There are treatments available, and they work, Joe. You should find out about them. With the right treatment, asthma and allergy sufferers can all breathe much easier. For free information, call this number. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Tom and the boys over there. And, uh, and, the, and the woman, I should say. The boys and the woman. I'm so used to saying the boys. But, uh, geez, they, they do a great job for us. And uh, as a matter of fact, we're going to uh, feature them right now in a little tune. And uh, I forgot to ask, what, the, what, what is the tune, Tom? Uh, we're going to do a Miles Davis tune called... Miles Davis tune? Freddy the Freeloader. Freddy the Freeloader. So, uh, quite we're uh, happy to uh, have tonight. at this time, ladies and gentlemen, our fine okay. Sunday night band. Their, uh, their name changes every week, but uh, their quality does not. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, here now, Tom and the uh, men and women of the Sunday night band, give them a big round of applause.
and Thank nice you. job, Thank guys. You. Jeez, Thank you guys sound better and better every week. Thank and uh, why don't you introduce our, our tenant? Mark is not here. He's a uh, Mark choir is concert. singing on the choir concert. That's right. So we have somebody else here tonight. This and is the lovely and talented Stacy Hayden. Stacy Hayden, give her a big hand, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, just just uh, quickly introduce uh, your other two people here. Uh, whoops. Dan Troak, <laughs> formerly. Yeah, I don't want to. <laughs> I'll protect it. Anyway, yeah, just introduce. Dan Troke, formerly on the acoustic bass. <laughs> And John Crinky, the man with the sticks on drums. There he is. Very good. <laughs> Thanks. Well, is it going to be okay? I it, well, be, do we have to pay any money? That's what I'm asking you. Probably not. Probably not? I could think of some improvements on it. Some gold hardware. <laughs> some sure. Any lawsuits? No. All right. Well, thanks a lot, guys, for, for doing this. And uh, like I say, you guys sound better and better every week, and, and glad to have you here. Right now, we're going to uh, pause now for a little poetry with our very own Jeff Perry, and then come back with more. So stay with us as Sunday night continues. Thanks for joining us now. Enjoy Poetry with Jeff. It's time again for some poetry with Jeff. Good evening. Tonight, I'll be reading from the Bob Packwood Diary. April 3rd, 1989. Today I interviewed a chick who wants to be my new secretary. She was a hot babe, so I was excited about it. I asked her the standard questions. Can you type topless? Would you mind pressing my pants while I'm still in them? And do you ever use utensils? She got very angry and slapped me. That's good. I like it when they play rough. She has definite potential. No one will ever read this. That was some poetry with Jeff. Vince, that new dummy cam is great. Yeah, it'll sure give people a whole new outlook on what it's like when you don't wear a safety belt. No! No! <laughs> They'll get the picture. You could learn a lot from a dummy. Buckle your safety belt. Tony has some drinks, a few joints, and got into a fatal accident tonight. Only he doesn't know it yet. Drugs make you forget. And if you forget how risky sex can be, you could catch the AIDS virus and not know it for months, even years. AIDS, another way drugs can kill. And uh, we are back here now. Oh, we're back over here. Hey, how you doing? Way over there. Anyway, uh, glad to have you back with us. And you know, uh, I'm not wearing my usual suit and tie tonight, but uh, I'm wearing my my uh, University of Wisconsin Platteville T-shirt right here. Has the uh, WSUC champions, and of course our our fine pioneer. Look at that! Oh, look at that! We got a shot of it. Beautiful work, guys. Russ Hill and our camera people, our technical director Mark Dome, they're doing a great job on that, aren't they? Look at that! Beautiful. Anyway, that's uh, our. Not that I have that great of a chest, but uh, uh, a good shirt. Our men's basketball team opens up uh, play this week on Tuesday, right? Kevin O'Connor, he's running one of our cameras tonight. Wednesday, Wednesday at 7.30 in the uh, Williams Fieldhouse, and it'll be against the uh, Latvian team, and uh, the Latvian Select Olympic team. So it should be a good matchup. 7.30 on Wednesday, don't forget to uh, stop on out. And uh, that's so, kind of the preseason. And, of course, we have a tournament. Kevin and I will be covering that for WSUP Radio. You can catch this uh, Wednesday's game on 91 FM. That's 90.5 on your, on your radio dial. And then also can uh, catch the uh, big tournament out in Ohio coming up the weekend of the uh, 19th and 20th. That will also be on, uh, on your radio as well. And then if you want to mark your calendars far in advance, and this is really an important game, coming up on December 4th, uh, we'll take on UW-Whitewater in what promises to be a huge, huge contest right here at Williams Fieldhouse. I believe that is a uh, Saturday night. So uh, December 4th, a Saturday, uh, be here at the Williams Fieldhouse for that big, big event. Right now, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go live. As uh, you can tell I've, in my ear, I've been told that we have a live satellite hookup now by the miracles of TV as we were stalling there. Uh, we finally have our satellite worked out. Uh, we're going live out of California with a report on the California fires 
Here now, our very own correspondent, Ed J. Fun no, it's, uh, Jeff, Jeff Perry, actually. Jeff Perry, go ahead, live in California, Jeff. Uh, good evening. I'm Jeff Perry, reporting from California. Firefighters have finally contained the wildfires here in Malibu, California. The destruction to property was great. Hundreds of homes were burned, but the real loss, of course, was the destruction of the homes of many of Hollywood's most famous celebrities. In Ventura County, a civilian settlement was formerly reduced to ashes. Uh, unfortunately, though, firefighters were able to save the mansions of actor Wilford Brimley and uh, singer Michael Bolton. Now, outside of Malibu, uh, an orphanage and a senior citizen center uh, were reduced to ashes as firefighters concentrated their efforts on uh, containing the blaze before it reached the home of actor Corey Haim. Now, in downtown Malibu, flaming patients spill out of a burning hospital into the street. These patients later joined firefighters as they worked to extinguish the blaze before it reached the home of Beverly Hills 90210 star Shannon Doherty. Several Hollywood stars have announced they will be recording a song uh, to benefit the other celebrities who lost their homes in the fire. Uh, the week of tragedy is now over, and I think it's heartening to see the resilience of these Californians as they rally around their celebrities. I'm Jeff Perry reporting from California. Thank you very much, uh, Jeff Perry, live from California at that, uh, at that scene. Todd, and, uh, what? Todd, 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 I finally found a guest. But, well, you were supposed to have River Phoenix on the show, but, he, you know. Well, it's not River Phoenix, but. Who, who have you got? You're not going to believe this. I did it. You found us a guest? Yes. A real guest? Yes. Really, who? The assistant herdsperson from the Pioneer Prairie Farm from this summer. Okay. <laughs> don't act so excited. Uh, no, I love who, who is he? Is it a he? She's also a member. Oh, it's a she. she wow. Of Sirius Fraternity as well as an Ari and Porter Hall. Can I introduce wow. her? Sure, bring her out. We, we, we have some time. It's my pleasure to introduce sure. to you at this time, Sandra Condon. Let's yeah, give her a hand. Sandra, how you doing? Nice yeah, to see you. Good. Have a uh, clip on the microphone there, and uh, Sandra Condon. Now, uh, are you in any relation to the Condon uh, Condon Jewelry Company? Nope. Company? Really? No relation whatsoever. Really? Now, you know, uh, it, it's been kind of sad, uh, mm -hmm. really, with the whole River Phoenix thing and everything. Did you, did you ever know Phoenix? Um, no, not personally, but um, sorry to say this, Todd, but I don't think you would have had a good time because the audience is pretty dead. <laughs> yeah, they, they kind of are, but you got the biggest applause of the night. I know. Really? So now, now you know, are, are you, have you studied herds people? I mean, herds people or, or farm animals? What do you do as a herds well, see, person? Actually, um, I'm from Milwaukee. Of oh, Milwaukee? Yes. Wow. And my first experience on a farm was the summer. Really? Yes. And I wasn't the assistant herds person, oh. but I helped milk and I painted and painted and painted. Really? Yeah. Wow, well, that's, that's pretty cool. So uh, now you're also an RA? Yes, I am. And you enjoy that? Yes, I do. On campus? On campus. And you're also a member of the series uh, Fraternity? Yes. Really? Fraternity. A fraternity. Now, yes. now see, I made, a, I, made a little, I made a little joke. Yes, I know. About, we about we the, didn't quite get that joke, but... You see, but see, I pick on everybody. It was nothing meant. You're a beautiful bunch of people. Okay. A beautiful bunch of women. So we weren't sure what you meant. Like, what? if you no, would have said no. that we were going to have a party or something... Would you have a party? Then I could see... No, because we're dry. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> so then it would have been funny, but... <laughs> I see. Well, yeah, what, what, what does that mean? That means that um, there's no alcohol allowed in our house or around our house. Really? Or in the area. Is that in force? Yes. Come on. Uh, it is. It is, really? Yes, it is. No, none whatsoever. It's in our national and local bylaws. Really? Yes. Well, that's pretty cool. So, uh, do you guys have any big events planned? You were the rush, co you were the rush coordinator, right? Right. So, I mean, you call Limbaugh or what? <laughs> what no, What does no, the no. rush coordinator do? Um, what I do is um, I get um, people together, um, per perspectives. Mm -hmm. um, so, it's it's we get together with other fraternities uh -huh. um, and we plan fun activities That's to cool. get pledges. Oh, well, good deal. So, uh, anything else? Uh, anything else we want to talk about here? We're almost running out of time. Did, did you ever ever watch uh, My Own Private Idaho? That was a great movie. It was very bizarre. It was bizarre, wasn't yes, it? It was. Mm -hmm. Any favorite scenes from that movie? No, none. None, really? No. Oh, jeez. Well, uh, any, <laughs> anything else but before you go? I mean, any, from the, as far as the work on the uh, farm? Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. smart cows, intelligent cows. Our Traverson's telling me, I guess he had an experience with intelligent cows. Oh, there's some, 
some smart cows. I mean, there are stupid cows, but there's some very What's the difference between a smart cow and a stupid cow? Well... The ones that live in Dobson, the ones that live in Porter? No, I'm sorry. Ah, <laughs> that wasn't funny. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No. Now, see, uh, now, now I'm offending somebody else. Now I've gotten see? somebody else. I know, but... But see, but, mean, now, but now you're off the hook. That wasn't you. But I live in Porter. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I lived in Dobson last year. I didn't consider myself a cow. Oh, no, I'm sorry. It's just it's a little joke, please. I'm certainly no, I'm certainly no uh, athlete or anything myself. Okay. Any good, you know, <laughs> look at the mustache. It's a goofy looking mustache. Yeah. So anyway, so so there are intelligent cows and, and non-intelligent yes. cows, dumb cows. There are. How do I you mean, tell just the like just like people. I mean, there's uh -huh. intelligent people and there are pretty dumb people. How do you tell the difference? Um. Well, stupid cows. Mm. <laughs> They're, they just kind of, you know, they just kind of sit there and just, uh -huh. they don't do anything but smart cows, you know, they can, they can find their way around. They, they know how to get out of things. Uh-huh. Yes. Which cows are the ones that get up on top of each other all the time? Those, Those are, are the cows that are in heat. <laughs> really? Yeah. I, I, I've, always, I've always enjoyed that. Mm -hmm. uh, anything else uh, as far as uh, happening out in the farm out there, the Platteville farm? No. Nothing I was, I was the happened. only female out there this summer, but... Really? Mm-hmm. Did you ever get, like, uh, have to, to get a pitchfork after some of those guys out there? No. Really? They were, they were very, all very, very Curious, but well-behaved. Yes. <laughs> well, that's good. Well, hey, I, I can't uh, tell you how much I appreciate you having you come on the show okay. and uh, helping us out a little bit here, even mm -hmm. though uh, River couldn't make it, obviously. And Sorry. uh But you're much better. Thank you. Much better looking and much more pleasant, I'm sure. Give a big okay. hand, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Yes, there we go. Anyway, that's going to about, uh, wrap it up uh, for this week. Uh, join us next week. We'll have a brand new show for you. And uh, remember, if you're uh, out in the uh, general public, we tape the show every week at uh, 7 o'clock right here in Pioneer Tower. And uh, what? Sunday night. Sunday night. Exactly. What did I say? Did I say something else? I don't know. No. Sunday night at... Uh, what? I have my God. They're going to rush. The, they're going to rush this. Rush the stage or something. I don't know. Hold them back. Uh, anyway, uh, we'll see you next Sunday night at seven o'clock. We tape right here, and then eleven o'clock. It's on the air every Sunday night. So until next week, take care. <laughs>